Well, thank you everyone um, for welcoming me here today. I am honored to be a part of this um, amazing panel of speakers. Uh, and I know you've been in front of your computers for quite a while, so I appreciate you being here for this presentation. Um, if there's one thing I think we all recognize is that it's been quite a year, right? Take a moment and think about where you were a year ago today. I was busy preparing my younger son for his freshman year of college. We were shopping for dorm items, gathering with friends for graduation parties and send off barbecues, and taking last minute weekend trips before summer's end. This year looks entirely different, right? This year's dorm supplies include a COVID-19 medical kit, literally a gallon of hand sanitizer, and multiple spray bottles of disinfectant. But all the disinfectant in the world doesn't protect me as a parent from the worry I feel sending my son into a campus situation that I know will put him at greater risk to catch COVID-19 than if he simply stayed home. I mean, his dorm has a big communal bathroom that he will be sharing with 10 other guys. Ick. In contrast, last year at this time, I was readying my older son for apartment living near his campus in St. Louis. But for him, the story is very different this year. Although he is entering his senior year of college and should be embarking upon further independence, instead, just a few weeks ago, he was suddenly faced with having to stay home this semester and study remotely from his childhood bedroom. His university revoked the housing contracts for all of the juniors and seniors, essentially leaving them homeless. My parental worry for him is around whether or not his education will be compromised by going fully to e-learning. And how will a healthy 21-year-old, eager to be independent and ready to spread his wings, be impacted by another semester at home with mom and dad? While I'm dealing with college students, the dilemma I face as a parent is not all that different from parents of younger kids. And as parents, we are all faced with a similar concern. Whether they are staying at home to learn or returning to school in its much altered form with masks and social distancing, how might our kids' development, education, and mental health be impacted by the changes brought about by COVID-19? More importantly, what are some ways to cope with the changes in our children's educational situations, regardless of whether they're at home or at school? I'm going to spend much of my time today addressing the specifics about how to cope. I'd like to offer some food for thought on how to manage through the coming school year and hopefully attain some level of calm through this very challenging year. And before I begin, I want to acknowledge that there are many different scenarios possible. Some parents are working from home, some are not. Some kids are doing e-learning at home, some are not. And there are multiple combinations of what parents and kids are doing, depending on the number of employed parents and the number of students in the home. I'm not in any way going to offer a one-size-fits-all uh, one solution, nor can I address each scenario specifically. What I'm hoping to do today is give a model for how to approach our new world of COVID-19 with all its restrictions. And I will leave how to fit my suggestions into your specific life scenario up to you. So I'm actually going to start today by addressing self-care for adults. That's right, I'm talking to you, mom, grandma, yaya, about your own stress levels and how to cope because we all have probably heard the adage if mommy isn't happy, ain't nobody happy. My favorite analogy for self, parental self-care is when you may have heard before, when you're on an airplane sitting next to your young child, if the cabin loses air pressure and the oxygen masks drop down, we are told as parents to put our own oxygen mask on first and then to put the mask on our child. Self-care for parents is the oxygen mask. If we can't breathe, how will we be there for our children? We have to take care of ourselves first. I want to share some stunning statistics from the National Center for Health Statistics of the CDC. They wanted to gauge the impact of this year's current events on people's mental health, and they found that in July 2020, 30% of adults reported symptoms of depression compared with only 6.6% last July. 36% of adults report symptoms of anxiety this July versus eight last year. Furthermore, rates of anxiety are higher among women than men, and depression is a little higher among women than men as well. Given all that has happened in 2020, I don't think these statistics are surprising. 
In fact, given the number of phone calls and emails I have fielded in the last few months from people seeking therapy for their anxiety and depression, I'm really surprised these numbers aren't higher. Ladies, we absolutely must take care of ourselves as we move forward with taking care of our kids. And to do that, I'd like us to consider what I'm going to call the new three R's for 2020. Now, why the three R's? Aren't the three R's the academic subjects of reading, writing, and arithmetic? What do these have to do with self-care? The three R's that we, as, we, as we have always known them are fundamentals. They are the foundations on which all other academic disciplines are built. So today I wanna to share some mental health fundamentals that I think will be crucial for us as adults to get through the coming school year. So here are my three R's for adults. Reflect, rejuvenate, relationship. And actually, as I was preparing this talk, I noticed that there are a lot more R words that are relevant to this discussion today. So I offer the letter R as a way to remember many of the points I will be making today. Let's start with the first R, reflect. Before you dive into anything, it's a good idea to take a moment to reflect a bit first. Reflect on the past to improve the present. Reflection leads to self-awareness and thoughtful, intentional action. When it comes to school this fall, probably the most important thing is to reflect on is last spring. What worked in your kid's school situation? What didn't? No one wants to repeat the frenzy that describes last March. So take the time now to consider how to be proactive and set a positive tone for school this year. Ask yourself how you can create a better learning situation for your family. And by family, I mean not just your kids, but for you too. Remember, if you aren't happy, no one is happy. Rejuvenate. Here's where I'd like to say a bit about stress management. And I could spend an hour on this topic alone, so I'm really just going to zip through a few suggestions. Um, and I will point you to the resource page that I will be providing to Barbara, um, hopefully by tonight, um, before the weekend's over. Uh, I wanted to put together some further reading um, since um, there's so much that can be said on this whole topic. But first, find a healthy balance of diet, sleep, and exercise. And actually, if you focus on healthy diet and regular exercise first, the sleep habits will likely fall in line. If your body is regulated in these three areas, I promise you, you will be better able to manage your stress better. Um, people are often surprised when they come to me for therapy and I ask them about their diet, sleep, and exercise habits first before we even get into the emotion because I know if we're not regulated in those areas, it's just so much harder to deal with the emotional stress. Um, have you ever tried breathing exercises to calm yourself when anxious? You can find some of these in apps like Calm and Headspace, which I've also list listed on the resource page. Laugh. Look for humor in your situation. Read the Stone Age comics. Watch funny YouTube videos. Make sure you laugh. Pay attention to what you're thinking about and watch the stinking thinking. If you find yourself going down the rabbit hole of worry and rumination, it's best to stop what you were doing and challenge those worrisome thoughts. As St. Paisios said, is everything really the way it appears to you? Always put a question mark after every thought since you usually look at things with a negative slant. If you put two question marks, it is better. If you put three, better still. Take some time for enjoyable leisure activities. And here's where I think especially moms, you need to give yourself permission to do what you find rejuvenating. Take time to nurture your spiritual health with prayer and spiritual reading. While today's culture talks a lot about meditation, consider that our Orthodox Church has offered a rule of prayer that can work wonders for reducing stress. And prayer doesn't have to be long and drawn out. Think about it. Lord have mercy is the simplest and most powerful prayer we have as Orthodox Christians. And when you stop and say it throughout your day, it can be very comforting and grounding. Reduce your news intake. Do you really need to read every headline or follow the daily coronavirus numbers? And last, eliminate doomsday scrolling. Have you heard this term, doomsday scrolling? 
This is when you scroll a website or your social media feed skimming for alarming news stories. Needless to say, this brings you down, not up. These are just a few ideas for self-care, but the point today is to remember to put the oxygen mask on yourself first so you can help your children more effectively. Let's talk about relationship, because at the end of the day, life is all about relationships. Humans are made to be in relationship with each other and with God, so I want to offer some thoughts about relationships. First, with regard to your children, please remember that you are a parent first and their e-learning teacher second. If you feel conflicted between these two roles, make a commitment to being mom first and teacher second. That is what they need for you, from you more than now, more than ever. Remember to enjoy your children. Play a game with your kids or engage in imaginary play with your younger ones. Play school and let them be the teacher for once. Filled with Legos, blocks, throw a baseball in the backyard. Most importantly, let them choose what you play. And do not direct the play. Here's a little challenge for you. See if you can play for a half hour straight without teaching, guiding, or correcting them on how they are playing. Just sit and enjoy the play for what it is. This will be a very therapeutic experience for both of you because after a day of schoolwork, your child will get to have some control and you won't have to think so hard. If you have teens and or college students at home, please try your best not to micromanage. They need to become more independent and that's so much harder to do now with everyone at home together all the time. I recommend for really building a relationship and your communication with your kids, um, that you set a weekly family meeting to talk with your kids each week about what's working and where you as a family need to make some adjustments. Now, let's take a moment and think about relationships with people outside our immediate family, because there are a lot of people in need of relationship right now. I like to think that just because we're supposed to be maintaining physical distance, this does not mean we have to be socially distanced. I really dislike that term, social distance. Now more than ever, we need social support to get through this pandemic. So I have a few ideas for how you can reach out to people outside of your home safely. First, reach out and include relatives in your meal times. You can do that by putting the iPad or a laptop on the dinner table and eat with someone outside your home where you'd enjoy the fellowship. Just turn Zoom on. It doesn't have to be just for meetings, right? Connect with kids, kids with their grandparents or other adults by having Yaya teach a cooking lesson or Papu play a game over the internet. You can also read to your children via Zoom. In fact, that's the picture on um, the screen there. My boys reading to a couple of their little buddies from church. And those kids were so engaged with being read to by people outside their home that I think they stayed on for an hour, which consequently gave the mom an hour of free time. So along those lines, think about offering some respite. If you are someone who does not have young kids in your home, can you think of ways you can help someone who does? Honestly, this will benefit you as much as it will the person you are serving. Love to Coast is an amazing organization with so much heart. What can your local chapter do to support parents right now? Could you organize retired teachers maybe to lend a hand with tutoring? Could you offer to read to kids in the afternoon to give a mom some relief? Could you start a meal train for families who are feeling totally overwhelmed? So as you move forward through this fall semester with your children, remember for yourself, reflect, rejuvenate, and remember relationship. Let's turn now to our kids and consider what their needs are to get through the school year. Let's talk about their new three R's for 2020. Resilience, routine, and reboot. Let's take each one by one. Resilience. What is resilience? This is our ability to adapt in the face of adversity and build new skills, to weather the storm and survive. Sometimes this means to shine and be successful, but sometimes resilience might just mean getting through a challenging time with minimal damage. And that is exactly how we have to think about our current circumstances. In regards to education, this might mean lowering the bar a bit and sending, setting very realistic expectations for your children. 
maybe they don't actually have to complete every single homework assignment to learn the concept they're working on. Maybe they're having a bad day, really missing their friends, and need more breaks than usual. You can help your child build their resilience by teaching them to identify how they're feeling and then find ways to cope with that feeling. Sometimes your time is better spent with your child talking about their frustration and empathizing with it than fighting over whether they're getting, they're getting their math assignment done. So think about building resilience by teaching your kids ways to manage stress. Remember all those stress management techniques I just ran through? They're important for your children too and can help them develop their resilience. Let's talk about routine. Routine gives kids a sense of safety and consistency and most kids actually crave routine. When my son was three years old, he would start every day the exact same way. He'd come pitter pattering down the stairs each morning, happy as a clam and ask me, what day is it today, mom? And I'd tell him the day, maybe it was Tuesday. And then he'd ask, and what do we do on Tuesdays, mom? He wanted to know what to expect. He wanted predictability and routine. Now, a few bits of advice regarding setting a routine. Try to think about breaking down routines throughout the day and consider setting a regular morning and afternoon routine. And most importantly, especially for younger kids, a bedtime routine that involves a story and a prayer. Second, let your child be involved in setting that daily routine. This will empower them and could actually be an advantage to e-learning for some kids because they can adjust the schedule to when they learn best and you as a parent can help them identify that. Be sure to include plenty of breaks throughout the day to relieve stress from staring at the computer screen. Plan for safe socializing with friends and family. And this is one of my favorite techniques. Use kitchen timers and alerts on your devices to help kids manage their time themselves rather than you constantly nagging them. Now, one bit of caution as you set your routine. Beware of another R, rigid. Please don't be severely rigid. If your child is having a rough day, if you are having a rough day, it's okay to be kind to yourself and your child and flex a little bit. A good routine is regular, not rigid. Aim for being consistent, not perfect. All right, reboot. What's a reboot? It's when you've loaded your computer or your gadget with so much content that it gets overloaded. And so you have to turn it off and back on to reset and refresh. I think we need a major reboot of our screen time. And by screen time, I mean our use of computers, smartphones, iPads, TV, all of our electronic devices. I'm gonna address screen time in kids right now, but honestly, my advice is for each and every one of us adults as well. If you know me or have heard me speak any time in the last year and a half, you know that I'm a huge advocate for reducing screen time use and us as adult, um, reducing screen time, um, for us as adults and even more so for our children. I believe in setting limits around screen use, but with e-learning, remote work from home and minimal in-person social interaction, there's been an enormous surge in screen use. And I know many families with good screen habits, usually, who basically tossed it all out the window when COVID hit. So I'd like us all to take a step back and consider how we might reboot and reconceptualize our screen time habits. First of all, reinstate the rules that you threw out the window when COVID hit, such as shutting down screens an hour before bed and charging devices outside bedrooms at night. If at all possible, set up study places outside the bedroom. Recognize that there are benefits to screen time during this time of COVID. This may be the only way kids can maintain their friendships and they need their friends. So rather than think about setting screen time limits, you might consider setting screen use limits. If they spend a half hour using FaceTime to connect with their grandparents, that is time well spent. An hour of mindless scrolling on TikTok is not the same as an hour creating a cool YouTube video or playing Minecraft with real world friends. If you are a parent who's been going to battle with your kids over screen time, 
consider that the family conflict might actually be worse for your kids than the screen use itself and consider what else might be going on with you and or your kids that might need to be addressed directly rather than the battle over screen time. Do you know what your kids are doing online? Be aware of what your kids are looking at and emphasize quality content. YouTube in particular has some amazing quality content. My younger son taught himself to play the guitar from YouTube videos. YouTube taught my older son how to make rice. My mother told me just last week she watched an iconographer paint icons on YouTube. So it's definitely not all bad, but you may have to guide them to the good stuff. Encourage students to rest by unplugging at different times during the day and especially right before bedtime. And last and probably most importantly, talk to your kids about their screen usage. Common Sense Media just released a report on teens and technology that I've included on the resource list that I do promise to pass along soon. And they give some excellent advice for parents on how to start conversations with kids around their technology use. I hope you will take the time to look at their suggestions, but in a nutshell, you wanna take a genuine interest in their online activities. Who are they following on Instagram or TikTok? What do they like about those people? Listen to what they say without judgment. Let them know they can tell you anything about their online experiences. If you show openness and not judgment of their online activities, they will be more likely to share with you when they run into a problem. So again, as we get through this, if this pandemic, worry less about how much time your child is online and pay more attention to what they are doing. Think about screen use, not just screen time. And remember this one key fact supported by numerous studies, and that is this. If kids are using the internet, social media to connect with friends and family in pro-social ways, then that can benefit their overall mental health. But if they are using screens for mindless activities, it can lead to negative effects. Okay, you've all been such a great audience. I'm gonna give you a bonus R and that's relax. That's it. No additional points necessary. Just take a deep breath, put on the oxygen mask and relax. Thank you.